Another question I got was from Brian Gumbel, who's the CRO at Armis. And Armis are, I think, pretty public on the idea that they're marching towards an IPO at some point. Uh, Brian's question was, leading up to the IPO, how did you, how did the company decide what growth rate you were going to tell the street that you would hit, knowing, of course, that if you didn't hit it, the stock would tank. So there's a balance there, right? You've got to be yeah. aggressive, but not too aggressive. So I think, you know, the obvious statement is you always build in um, a strategy that allows you to beat and raise. And I think I'm stating the obvious there because I think everyone knows that. And frankly, the markets know it too. If you didn't beat and raise two quarters in, you probably have a big problem with the stock, right? Um, I will tell you, it's a great question. I will tell you that your the people, the bankers and the investors that bring you out are well experienced in this and they help you with that. They sit down, they go through the books with you, they understand the forecast, and then they help build a plan for you too. That's something that I was not aware of how involved they are in the process, but they are. So they'll help through that process. I think the larger point that is a CRO you need to solve is um, that forecast, that methodology, that repeatable process that I mentioned earlier better be in place. You know, so um, I think those are the things that a CRO needs to focus on is how do you build that velocity play what are your routes to market? Is that tightened up? Do you have the proper dashboards and metrics to manage against? Do you have a forecast methodology? Do you have, by the way, I'm a big believer in this, and I've now used it three times in a row. I've got a product that I buy that is an AI tool that sits on top of Salesforce. I never look at Salesforce for, for forecasting. I've got a tool that sits on top. I'm a big believer you go out and you buy a tool like that ahead of time. It's not the end-all, be-all. The tool's not going to tell you what to forecast but it's a barometer. It's another thing to measure. It's science against your art. There's a little bit of science and art that we all know goes into forecasting. So these types of things you have to put in place, then the bankers will help you with some of the other stuff. So they're coming back to you saying, well, let me, so growth is a thing, right? You know, profits is, is a distant second. It seems like growth is what gets valued. Until and it's not. Right? That, until it's not. Until the markets change their mind and they want profits. But yes, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah, gr growth is is what's valued until it's not. Um, now, Sentinel One were on a tear, right? So it's not like you were thinking, do we do we go with thirty percent growth, right, or thirty five? Your S one yeah. looked like you know one hundred percent year over year growth, things like that were in there, right? So you were on a great tear yeah. anyway. But then I, I think, guess I think Andrew on that point there, um, I want to hit on that point that, and I'm remembering reflecting back now that we were we were looking at what our peers have done around the rule of 40. When you go public, if you got the rule of 40, then their market's going to love you and they're going to give you, you know, they're going to buy and all those things, right? Hold, hold on one second. Rule uh, of 40, what, what does that mean? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a term that I want. It's pretty, it's pretty specific, but a rule of 40 is a thumb about it. It's measuring your profitability and your growth and comparing them. And so all these other companies that had went out that we were comparing ourselves to, and you could name the companies as well. Um, we wanted to be put in that category. These companies that were had one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars stocks. Okay, um, all of those folks when they went out, they were somewhere around seventy, eighty to one hundred percent growth. So we decided that we needed to talk about one hundred percent growth. So I will tell you that then we built a playbook as such for the following year that said, you know, what is the hiring we need? What's the plan we need to sustain one hundred percent growth year over year? And so that's part of what that went into our methodology. That's where I was going with that, right? I mean, you, you, if you've got the foundation, you've got the model starting to crank, then the question is, well, how do we move the levers so that we hit the growth numbers right. that you want, as opposed to sitting there going, I don't know, I guess we'll throw some bodies at it, right? Which I'm not saying people do yes. that, but, uh, you know, Proper that can be the planning. default. Correct. Yeah. So having the foundation is what allows you to then work with the bankers and with the CFO, CEO to get the right uh, right execution happening beforehand. Sounds like that's right. And, and having the vision of what you want to look like. You've got all these. If you've got six or seven companies that are like minded and you've had they've had successful IPOs, then do you want to look similar? Well, how did they go out? What did they look like? What was their rule of forty? What was their growth? And then you build a plan around that. 